Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Thursday, March the 30th. And today we're looking at uh, programming the SI5351A. Now in a previous video, uh, we looked at initially programming the SI5351 uh, using the Arduino. And there's an Arduino Uno, and it's connected via I2C, I2C to uh, an SI5351A board. This is a board I got from Adafruit. So it's got the uh, clock generator on it. It's also got a 25 mega, megahertz crystal as well, which is the uh, precise time source for the uh, clock generator. Now, since the last video, uh, I've added SMA connectors onto the board, plus I've got coaxial connectors going into uh, my scope, and I've terminated my scope in 50 ohms, so I've got a good transmission, uh, transmission line going there. There's a spectrum analyzer. You can use the spectrum uh, um, view on this scope as well, but I've got a spectrum analyzer there with a 20 dB pad and a DC block. And right now we're just looking at channel one on the uh, scope. Now, initially when we did this um, several videos ago, I just used the default uh, software example from Adafruit, which produced uh, three sine wave or three square waves at 112 megahertz, I think it was 13 megahertz and 10 kilohertz. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to use the Clock Builder, which is a program from uh, Skyworks that now own, uh, they bought uh, Silicon Labs. And I'm gonna use that program to um, reprogram this for uh, three frequencies for the whisper band. So I'll have frequency for the uh, 10 megahertz sorry, 10 meters, 12 meters, and 50 meters. Right now we're looking at uh, 28.1 uh, megahertz. That's the uh, 10 meter uh, whisper frequency. So let's go over to uh, Camtasia. Okay, so let's look at a block diagram of the SI5351A. Um, it consists of uh, two phase lock loops, A and B, and three output dividers and uh, a final R divider. So basically, here's the phase lock loop portion of it, and there's two of them. There's a PLL A and B. So you've got a VCO working, let's say, in the range from 600 to 900 megahertz, and you've got this feedback divider. Uh, the feedback divider can be an integer M, or it can be fractional. So you have N over D, which is numerator over denominator. These are values. N can be 15 to 90, and N can be anywhere from 0 to uh, 1 million and change, and D, the same thing. D has to be at least one, otherwise it would be dividing by zero, which you can't do. So basically what happens, this frequency is divided by M, and it's compare, compared to the crystal frequency of 25 megahertz. And the phase detector will move the VCO up and down so that ultimately whatever this ends up as divided by M plus N over D will give you 25 megahertz. So when these two are equal, then this thing starts stops moving. There is an output divider on... After, the, after all, all this is settled down, there's another output divider, which can be integer or fractional as well, and there's a final divider there. Now, to calculate uh, the three, uh, I want to have three frequencies for 10 meters, 12 meters, and 50 meters for whisper on the, um, uh, the clock module. So to do that, we can use a program called Clock Builder. So there's a program from Skyworks. And basically, um, it's designed to really work with an EVBU, an evaluation board unit. So uh, basically what would happen is you'd figure out what parameters you need for what frequencies, and they would automatically load it over I2C to your evaluation board. But since we don't have a board, we're using a, uh, a separate uh, module. It says no EV present, so it wasn't detected. So we can create a new project here, and uh, we go to clock generators. And then we select the 5351A down here. If I can find it, there it is. You select that and MSOP. There's the I2C address, which we don't need. For the output clocks, we have to put in the frequencies here. So this is where you enter, um, you say enabled enabled, enabled, and here uh, here you would enter the frequencies that you need. So for instance, for the um, 10 meter whisper frequency, let's see. 
So for the 10 meter frequency, you would enter in here 28.1246 M. Okay, and then you enter the frequency for output one and output two. And then you, um, then you run this program and it'll produce a report for you. So what does that report look like? So there's the report. Okay, those are the frequencies. That's your 10 meter. Um, that's your um, 12 meter and that's your uh, 15 meter frequency. And then it gives you the various values. So those are the three frequencies. Now here's the key point. This is your VF VCO and that's the M. So it'll be an integer M plus uh, N1 over D1, two values to give you this point 999488. And those are the uh, output 0, 1, and 2. Those are the numbers, the integers, and the um, uh, fractional values you need to set up the uh, phase lock loop. So let's look at the original This is the original Arduino sketch that we used in the previous video. And uh, it was set up for integer mode <clears throat> to give you 112.5 megahertz. And it was also set up in a fractional mode as well. But what we wanna do in this particular case is we're gonna need fractional mode. So basically take this uh, initial file and we're going to modify it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take out this section here. We don't need the integer section and we're just going to use the fractional mode and we'll use PLLA. So let's look at the modified version of that. So there we go now. So I'm only using the fractional mode of that file. So here we're going to set up PLLLA. There's my integer to divide the 899 megahertz, 35, and that's the fractional portion. So 1048038 over 1048575 gives you the 0.999948. Okay, and now output zero, we're gonna set to the 10 meter frequency, and it turns out that that frequency divided by 32 is all you need. You don't need a fractional here for this output zero. For output one, um, which is 24.9426, you do need an integer and you need a fractional part. And then for output two, uh, you do need an integer, which is 42 and a fractional part. So there we go. And then you run that and then you'll get the three new frequencies. So uh, on the picoscope there, um, what we're measuring here is we're measuring the 10 meter frequency at 28.1. I've got a measurement here uh, to measure the frequency. So there's my 28.1, and I've also got a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. Now for CMOS, you get 3.3 volts output, but don't forget the output impedance is 50 ohms, and I've terminated it in 50 ohms, so I'm going to get about half of that. So I'm seeing about 1.8 volts. Uh, you could also look at the spectrum if you wanted to on this particular instrument. It goes to 100 megahertz, so we can see about five components. So let's go to spectrum view. And I'm going to have to uh, go all the way out here to 100 megs. So there we go. So there's my primary component at 28.1 megahertz. And there's the third harmonic. Remember, for a square wave, theoretically, it's the primary component plus odd harmonics like 3, 5, and 7. So in conclusion, then, what we've done is we've reprogrammed the uh, 5351A clock generator module. Uh, for three whisper frequencies using the program, the Clock Builder Pro, which gives you the parameters to set up the uh, phase lock loop and also the output dividers.